What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Electronics episode 28. In this episode we are going to learn how to add binary numbers together as well as something called two's complement. And two's complement lets us represent negative numbers in binary and in turn allows us to subtract binary numbers. Now this is really important because in the next two videos we are going to be designing and creating a binary adder and that is going to be the very first part of our 8-bit computer. So let's get on to simple binary addition. Really, if you can add 1 plus 1 in binary, you'll be able to add any number in binary. So let's do that. Let's take 1 plus 1 in binary. Now in decimal, this is of course equal to 2 in base 10, which is, as we can easily determine, 1, 0 in binary. So if we can memorize that 1 plus 1 in binary equals 1, 0, we can take this principle and apply it to a larger binary number. Let's do something like 5 plus 2, which should equal 7 in base 10. So how do we represent 5 in binary? Well, that's just 1, 0, 1. And we are going to add that to 2. So what is 2 in binary? Well, that's just 0, 1, 0. So let's go ahead and add these numbers together. Now we can actually use a system that might be taught to little kids as they learn to add base 10 numbers when they're young. All we have to do is add column by column starting at the far right, at the least significant digit of each number. So we are going to start by looking at this column right here. Well, what's 1 plus 0 in binary? That's very simple, that's just 1, because 0 added to anything is just itself. Great, now we can move on to the second column over here. Again, we have 0 plus 1 in binary, which is just 1 again, okay, that's simple. And we'll take the next column over, again, 1 plus 0, that equals 1 in binary. Now if we convert this number from binary base 2 into decimal, we indeed get the number 7, which is exactly what we were expecting. So let's try something a little bit harder. So let's do something very similar, let's do 5 plus 3 this time, which should equal 8 in base 10. So again, we already know that 5 in binary is 1, 0, 1. And we can determine that 3 in binary is 0, 1, 1. And we're going to take these two numbers and we are going to add them together. So just like before, we're going to take a look at this first column over here. And we'll see that we instantly have a problem. We have a 1 plus 1. Now we know 1 plus 1 equals 2, which is equivalent to 1, 0, in binary, base 2. But we can't fit 1, 0 into a single digit space of our final result. So instead, we're going to take the rightmost digit, which is a 0 in the case of it being 2, and we're going to move that digit down underneath the first column. But remember, we still have this 1 to work with. So that number, we are just going to tack on to this column over here, the next column to the left. So now we can move on over to adding up the left column here, or the, the second column over. Again, here we have 1 plus 0 plus 1, which again equals 2, or 1, 0 in binary. So I'm going to bring the 0 down, just as I did in the first column, and that extra 1 is going to be tacked on to the next column over. And now if we look at this column, we can see that we have 1 plus 1 plus 0, which again is 2. So we'll bring the 0 down, and we get an extra 1 on the next column over. Well, now we just have a 1 over here in this fourth column. There's nothing else to add it to, so that's just going to stay a 1. And you'll notice that 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary base 2 is equal to 8 in base 10. So we got the right answer. All right, great. Let's do something even more tricky then. Let's go ahead and do 3 plus 3, which of course should equal 6 in base 10. So uh, 3 in binary is again 0, 1, 1. Actually, we don't even need that uh, leading 0, so it's just 1, 1. And we're just adding that to 3 again, so plus another 1, 1. All right, so let's continue just like we did before. We're going to take this first column, and we see that we have two 1s. That equals a 2, or a 1, 0. So we're going to bring the 0 down, and we're going to add the 1 onto the next column. Well, now we have something completely different. Now we have three ones to add together. We know that one plus one is two, so one plus one plus one is three, and well, if you haven't guessed it already, three in binary is just one, one. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, same exact thing 
as if we had added two ones together. We're gonna take the rightmost binary digit and we're just gonna move that digit down. So this is gonna stay a one. And we're gonna take the left digit and we're gonna move that over to the next column over. Of course, this third column has nothing else to add it to, so we can move this one down as well. So we get one, one, zero in binary equals six in base 10, the correct answer. So that's all I'm gonna show about binary addition. If you want more practice with this or you want more uh, or you want more info on this, there are plenty of YouTube videos dedicated to explaining binary maths and stuff, as well as articles online. Let's take a very brief break from this binary math stuff, and let's quickly describe how a computer stores these binary numbers. Because that's going to be important for when we learn 2's complement in just a second. So, for example, our 8-bit computer is going to store all of our numbers in chunks of 8 binary digits and I'm going to call these 8 bits. So this is either going to be referred to as 8 bits or 8 binary digits, either a 1 or a 0, or you might also refer to this as a single byte. So a single byte is 8 binary digits. And our 8-bit computer is going to store numbers, all these integers, positive and negative numbers, in groups of 8 binary digits, in groups of bytes. Now, if you had a 32-bit computer at home, it's gonna be storing all these numbers in groups of 32 bits per group. If you had a 64-bit computer, then every number is gonna be made up of 64 bits and grouped that way instead. So the size that we're able to store data at is gonna be really important because we have to know how to represent negative numbers as well as positive numbers. So if you were just learning binary, you might initially think that representing a negative number is going to be really, really simple in binary. And let me show you what I first thought when I learned this. Let's say we are working with a 4-bit wide, so we have 4 available binary digits rather than 8, just to make it easier. So we have our numbers are able to go 4 bits wide. Our computer is grouping them like that. Well, let's take the number, uh, I don't know, 1. So 1 is going to be 0001 which is just one in base 10. What if we wanted to get negative one in base 10? What is that going to equal? Well, what we could say, and I'm not saying that we should do it this way, but what we could say is let's take the farthest left bit available in our computer, in our grouping of these numbers, and let's make that the sign bit. So we can say, if this furthest bit is a zero, then we're gonna have a positive number. And if it's a one, then we're gonna have a negative number. So if we wanted to represent negative one, we just have to set that bit to zero. So we'd get one, zero, zero, one. And we could say that that is negative one. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and try adding one plus negative one, which of course we know should be zero. Well, let's do this in binary. So we have our representation of one and we're gonna add on our representation of negative one, right? So we're adding one plus negative one. Well, if we do the addition like we know how to do it, we're gonna have one plus one is two. So we're gonna bring the zero down and carry the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Okay, that does not look like zero at all. In fact, if we take a look at these three bits, that is equivalent to two, and we know that since this bit means negative if it's one, well, we have a negative bit here, so this must be negative two. And let me tell you, zero does not equal negative two. So there is an even better way to represent negative numbers in binary, especially when we want to add and subtract these binary numbers nice and easy, and when we want to build a simple circuit to do that for us fast and efficiently. And that is called two's complement. So. When we're talking about two's complement here, we're gonna do something special to make a number negative. Let's take our representation of one again. So this is one in base 10. To calculate the two's complement, we're gonna do a two-step process. First, we are going to flip every single bit. So if we have a zero, we're gonna change it to a one. So that's gonna become a one, that's gonna become a one, and this is gonna become a one. This one here is gonna become a zero. And after we've flipped all the bits, we are going to add one to the answer. So we are going to add 
a binary 1 to this. So uh, looking at only the green here, we have 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus nothing is 1, 1 plus nothing is 1, 1 plus nothing is 1. And we are going to say that this is equal to negative 1 in our base 10 system. Now this is really kind of strange and not intuitive at all. Especially when you get into larger numbers, it's really hard, especially for me, to determine if a number is negative 15 or negative 18 or positive 18, anything like that. It can be kind of difficult. But I will guarantee you that we are better off doing it this way because we can make a circuit to do all this really, really easily. And why do I say that? Well, let's do the same exact example. Let's take our representation of 1 and add it to negative 1. So we're going to have 1 plus negative 1. Now we know that in 2's complement, negative 1 means all 1's here. So we're going to add 1, 1, 1, 1 to this. Let's go ahead and add this together. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we're going to have a 0 and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2, so 0 carry the 1. Same thing, 0 carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0 carry the 1. Now you can see that we get an answer of 0. So 1 plus negative 1 is now equal to 0. That's really nice. This means we can do binary addition and since we can make negative numbers, we can do subtraction just using addition and making a number negative. All right. Now you might have noticed that something interesting happened here. We do have this extra 1 that got carried. So technically our number should really be 1 0 0 0 0. But in this example, I said that our computer is only going to support four bits at a time, four binary digits. Now this means that we have to be careful when we do adding and subtracting, because we might add a number that gets too big for our four bits to store. Now the reason why it's okay for us to just throw out this bit in this case is because this carry bit and the carry bit before it are the exact same. If these were different, then we would have had a problem. And let me show you that right now. Let's do, uh, I don't know, 6 plus 5. A nice, easy addition problem. What is 6 in binary? Well, it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we're going to add that to 5, which is 0, 1, 0, 1. OK, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to have 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 0 equals 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2, so we'll bring down the 0 and carry the 1. And now we have 1 plus 0 plus 0 is a 1. Now we know that 6 plus 5 should equal 11. And this in binary does equal 11, but there's an issue here. And that's because this is actually, in 2's complement, the negative representation of another number. If we flip all of these bits, so we get 0, 1, 0, 0, and then we add 1 to it, we get 0, 1, 0, 1. This here, 1, 0, 1, 1, was actually a representation for the value of 5, or rather negative 5 in this case up here. And that's because we can only store values from negative 8 all the way up to positive 7. So 11 isn't even representable using this 2's complement system with only 4 bits. Now, how can we check for if this was an invalid result for the amount of bits that we used? Well, all we have to do is compare the carry bit of the last column with the carry bit of the next column over. Now, in this case, there was no extra bit here, so we can assume it was a zero. Since these two bits were not equal, they were both different, one was a zero and one was a one, we know that our answer is invalid it isn't actually equal to what we thought it would be. We wanted to get 11, but 11 can't be represented, so instead it plopped out negative 5, which at first glance looked correct to us humans, but not to the 2's complement computer system. So 2's complement is great, it makes our circuitry easy, we can add, we can subtract numbers now. We just have to be careful to make sure that we check these last two carry bits to make sure our result was within the valid range for the amount of bits that we were using. For those of you who want to stick around, let me show you one other example. And maybe if I didn't explain something well, I'll catch it this time around. Let's do a little bit larger of a number. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this binary sequence. 101, 0, 0, 
one. So now I'm gonna say that my computer can support six bits at once, just for the sake of this example. Now luckily with two's complement, I can still say that this does mean that the number is negative, it's just I can't read this as the actual value of what negative number it is. So I do know that since it starts with a one on the far left, the number must be negative. So what number is this? Well, to get it back to a positive number, I have to flip all the bits. So I'm going to inverse all the bits. And then I'm going to add one to it. So we're going to have one, 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 zero, one, zero, like so. And this, if we calculate it, I believe is 23 in base 10, which means this up here was negative 23 in base 10. Okay, okay. So let's take our negative 23 and let's just, I don't know, we'll add a negative 5 to it. Oh boy. Now we have to figure out what negative 5 is in 2's complement with 6 bits. Well, in order to do that, let's go ahead and take our representation of 5, which is going to be hopefully just 1, 0, 1. We gotta flip all the bits, so we're gonna get this, and then we're gonna add 1 to that. And when I say add 1, I'm only talking about these two rows here. So 0 plus 1 is 1, and then that stays the same all the way through. So this is our representation of negative 5 using the 2's complement system. So let's go ahead and actually calculate this. Negative 23 plus negative 5. And of course, we should hopefully get negative 28 out as the result. So we'll grab our negative 23. So we're going to have 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And we are going to go ahead and we will add our negative 5, which is this representation. So we'll add 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Let's see what we get when we do this addition here. So we know a 1 plus 1 is a 2, so we carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2, so we will carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is just a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 0 and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1, that's 2, so 0 and carry the 1. Now we have 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's 3, so we're going to write a 1, and we're going to bring out an extra 1 over here. And this is kind of our extra bit. Again, we're just going to wind up throwing this bit away. Now before we look at our answer though, is this a valid answer in our 6-bit 2's complement system? Well. We're going to go ahead, we're going to check the last carry bit that we had, and compare it to the one right before it. They're both the same, they're both 1, which means our answer is okay, it's completely valid. Now that we know that, let's figure out what our answer actually was in base 10. Well, we know that our answer ends with a 1 on the left, so it is a negative number. So to figure out what number is negative here, we're going to flip all the bits, just like we've been doing and then we're gonna add one. We're gonna get one plus one, that's zero, carry the one. One plus one, that's zero, carry the one. And then one, 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 zero. And this equals, thankfully, 28 in base 10, meaning this must have been negative 28 in base 10, and we got the right answer that we were expecting. Again, if you have any trouble with two's complement stuff, if I maybe didn't teach in your style, there are, again, plenty of videos out there explaining it, plenty of articles. I highly encourage you to learn this stuff because it is, in essence, what the very beginnings of our 8-bit computer is going to be able to do. So thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.